Welcome back to Biostatistics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be differentiating two very important parameters which are useful for determining whether or not you can rule in or rule out a particular condition, and those are specificity and sensitivity. So we're first going to define specificity and sensitivity, talk about what the values mean for each, how to interpret them, and then we're going to use that knowledge and get some real world examples here and answer some questions. So hopefully this video will be helpful to you. Take for example any condition you could possibly think of. An ACL tear, which we'll look at in a few minutes. Uh, a, a PCL tear, a meniscus tear, a herniated disc in your spine. For any condition, you have to have ways to assess whether or not somebody has that condition. And those are just done through special tests. And every single special test is going to have a specificity value and a sensitivity value. So let's say we've got condition X. And there might be three tests to assess whether or not somebody has condition X. So test one is going to have a specificity and a sensitivity. Test two is going to have a specificity and a sensitivity, and so on and so forth. Specificity by definition is the probability that a patient has the condition you're assessing for given that the test used to do the assessment has a positive result. Okay, what does that mean? Well, we can look at this little mental trick right here to really get a handle on it. So we have this thing, it's spin, and then down here eventually we'll see snout. Snout is for, spec for sensitivity. And notice that it has two N's, and for specificity, spin has two P's. Okay, but this little trick can help you remember what specificity is for. So the SP is for specificity, and in fact, this is the typical abbreviation for a specificity value. The P is for positive likelihood ratio, which we haven't covered yet, or the P can just generally be positive result. Okay, in fact, that's probably a better way to put it, is just positive result. And then the N is just for ruling in. Okay, ruling in a condition. Okay, so what is specificity used for? Well, the specificity value is used whenever you have a positive result. So do you use a specificity value when the result of the test is negative? No, that one you'll end up using a sensitivity, which we'll look at in just a minute. So if you have a positive result, you look at the specificity. And the higher the specificity value is, the more likely that you can rule in a condition. Okay? In other words, the higher the probability that the patient has that condition. Okay? Now, for specificity and sensitivity, their values either range from 0 to 100% uh, if, you, if you express it as a percent, or if it's as a decimal, it's between 0 and 1. Okay? Um, so for this example, it's a very abstract example, and we'll have a more concrete one uh, later on in the video. But let's suppose we have a diagnostic test, and this diagnostic test assesses whether or not the patient has condition X. Okay? And this diagnostic test has this specificity value. It's 86% or 0.86. I'm going to go with the percent here. It's 86%. So what does that mean if the patient has a positive test result? Well, the key is they have a positive test result. Therefore, we know we're looking at specificity. And the higher the specificity value is, the more likely that we can rule in the condition. And really what this value means of 86% is, assuming that the patient has a positive result for that test, we look at the specificity value, and we know that there's an 86% chance that the patient has that condition. If this specificity value is 25%, then we would only be able to say, given a positive result, that the patient had a 25% chance of having that condition, and then therefore uh, that particular test is not very specific and very poor for ruling in that condition. Okay, so basically, if you have a positive test result, you look at the specificity value, and you see how high that value is. One, this tells you um, how likely you are to rule in that condition, but it actually gives you a concrete number, meaning that if the specificity is 86%, then if the patient has a positive result, there's an 86% chance that they have that condition, in this case, condition X. Now, if the test is positive, 
you do not look at the sensitivity. There's really no need to do that, okay? Because the positive result is for specificity. As we're gonna see on the next slide, a negative result is for sensitivity. So down here's another abstract way to look at specificity. So we'll use a concrete example. Let's suppose you have a diagnostic test you're wanting to figure out how good it is. How good is this diagnostic test as assessing whether or not somebody has a PCL injury, okay? So uh, you screen 100 patients with suspected PCL injuries. And you do this test, and these green dots are true positives. What that means is, is that whenever you perform this PCL diagnostic test and it comes out positive, the patient actually has the condition. That's a good thing, right? Because if you're doing this test to assess for a PCL tear and it's positive and they actually end up having the condition, that's good, right? You want as many of those as possible. That's a true positive. But these tests are not perfect, and so they're gonna also have false positives, okay? A false positive is when uh, you do this diagnostic test and it comes out positive, but the patient actually does not have the condition, okay? They don't have, in this case, a PCL tear. Just for whatever reason, that test came out positive. So that would be a false positive. Okay? And every red dot here is a false positive. Theoretically, you want to maximize the true positives and minimize the false positives. And so to actually get the specificity value, you actually take the number of true positives and divide by the number of true positives plus the false positives, and it gives you a percent. Okay? And so what this is interpreted as is if you screen somebody, what's the probability that they're going to be a true positive? And so that's why if we're given a specificity value of 86%, that means there's an 86% chance that if they test positive, that they actually have that condition. So that is specificity. Now for sensitivity. This is the exact opposite. Sensitivity is the probability that a patient does not have the condition, given that the test emphasis here has a negative result. Okay. So specificity looks at positive results. If you have a test that you're looking at and it, the test result comes out negative, you don't look at the, specif the specificity. Instead, if it's negative, you look at now at the sensitivity. And we can look at the same kind of mental trick right here, snout. So spin for specificity, snout for sensitivity. Again, look at those two ends also. So the SN right here, this is actually the typical abbreviation for sensitivity. So SN, the N, can either be a negative likelihood ratio, if that's where you're going, or just generally a negative result. So negative result, and then the out is from rule out. So if you do a test to assess something, whether or not somebody has it, and the test result comes out negative, you look at the sensitivity value, and however high that sensitivity value is determines how likely you're going to be able to rule out that condition. Okay. So let's suppose it's the same kind of thing here. We have a diagnostic test, um, and this assesses for the presence of now condition Y. And this test has a sensitivity value of 75% or 0.75. So we're going to use the percent, 75%. Okay. What do you think this means? Well, if it's sensitivity, that means that if the patient tests negative on that diagnostic test, then there's a 75% chance that you'll be able to rule out that condition if they test negative. So assuming that the test result is negative, the higher the sensitivity value, the more likely you're going to be able to rule out that condition. And in the same way, again, if the test is negative, we don't look at specificity. If the test is negative, automatically go to that sensitivity. Okay. Again, if the sensitivity value is 75%, assuming the test is negative, there's a 75% chance that they do not have condition Y, or whatever the condition is, or a 75% chance that you can rule out that condition. Um, we can do the same kind of abstract thing here with sensitivity, except if, instead of looking at the positives, now we're looking at the negatives. So what is a true negative? A true negative is basically when you do the assessment, the test, that is, and the test comes out negative. And also, a good thing, they don't have the condition, right? If you do a test and it comes out negative, it's a good thing if they don't have the condition. It means that it's a sensitive test. Okay, that's a true negative. And again, for sensitivity, you want to maximize those. So you want to maximize these red dots. But a false negative would be if you do the diagnostic test, 
it comes out negative, but they actually have the condition. Okay, that's a false negative. Those are the green dots here, and you want to minimize those. And so the way you calculate sensitivity is you take the number of true negatives, which are what you want to maximize, and divide by the total number of true negatives and false negatives. And again, this gives you a percent. So in this case, this example, our sensitivity value was 75%. Okay. So bottom line here on these two slides, if you get a positive result, look at the specificity. That gives you the probability you'll be able to rule in the condition. If you get a negative result, look at the sensitivity value, and that gives you the probability that you'll be able to rule out the condition. Again, assuming that the test result was negative. So now let's get some real world examples here. Okay, um, so we got three questions here, and they pertain to these three diagnostic tests. So these are special tests for an ACL tear. So there's Lachman's test, anterior drawer test, and a pivot shift test. And here are the specificity and sensitivity values. And based on these values, and I've given them as decimals here, but you should be able to start coming up with some ideas um, as to which one's the best for ruling in a condition if it's positive, and which one is the best at ruling out a condition if the result is negative. Okay, so let's look at the first question here. What test, if positive, okay, would be the best to rule in an ACL tear? So the key word here is positive. So which one of these values are we going to look at? Are we can look at specificity or sensitivity. Well, we're going to be looking at specificity. Okay, and so we want to look to see which one has the highest specificity. And the highest specificity is the pivot shift test. Okay, notice that its specificity value is 0 0.98. Okay, Lachman's test isn't that far behind. Um, An anterior drawer has the lowest. So the pivot sh shift test. If we do that and we get a positive result, there's going to be a 98% chance that they have an ACL tear. Because remember what specificity is. If they have a positive result, you look at the specificity, and it tells you what the percentage or what the chance is that you're going to be able to rule in that condition. So if a patient tests positive for a pivot shift test, the probability that they have an ACL tear is 98%. That's a very specific test. Look at the second question. Which test, if negative, would best rule out an ACL tear? Well, we have a negative result, so now we know we're looking at sensitivity values. And again, we want to look to see which one's the highest value. Okay? Um, pivot shift test, notice, is very specific, but poorly sensitive. Um, that's actually uh, not uncommon, where you can have a high specificity, but a low sensitivity for the same test. Um, anterior drawer is slightly more sensitive uh, than the pivot shift test, but it looks here like Lachman's test has the highest sensitivity. Okay? So if negative, we look at the sensitivity, look at where the highest value is, and then this would be uh, the test that would be most likely to rule out an ACL tear if it's negative. So if you do a Lachman's test, patient tests negative, then the probability they don't have an ACL tear is 77%. In other words, there's a 77% chance that we can rule out an ACL tear. Okay? If you just did a pivot shift test and it was negative, uh, that's not a guarantee that you can rule out an ACL tear because the sensitivity is only 32%. Okay? That's actually less than 50, so that's uh, not a terribly good sensitivity value. Okay? And then finally, which test, if positive, would best rule out an ACL tear? Well, this is a trick question because if we have a positive result, we're not looking to rule out, right? If we have a positive result, remember, spin. Positive result, there's our P, right? If I can highlight that. We're actually looking to rule in, not rule out, okay? The only way we'd be looking to rule out is if we had a negative result, okay? So in this question, trick question. A positive test cannot rule out a condition. It can only rule in a condition. Likewise, a negative test cannot rule in a condition. A negative test can only rule out a condition. And in either case, a positive or a negative test, you're gonna look at a different value. Positive test, you're gonna look at the specificity value. Negative result, you're gonna look at the sensitivity value. So hopefully this video gave you a decent understanding of specificity and sensitivity. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.